All right, per popular request, I'm finally doing it. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. That is, I'm gonna give you a complete walk around of my 2018 Electroglide. It is the police edition. That is the bike behind me that I work off of every day. Uh, we'll just do a complete thorough walk around. I'll show you uh, maybe how it's a, a bit different than the civilian version and some of the equipment and kind of how we set the bikes up. Now, I will tell you that it varies a lot uh, uh, here in the United States, at least. Everybody sets them up a little bit different. They do come with some standard things that Harley puts on them to make them a police model. But then there's a lot of variations on uh, our particular needs and maybe computers and modems and GPS and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is how we set them up. All right, one of the first myths that I want to dispel is that this is a you know super secret police motor and transmission. It's absolutely not. This is a 2018, so it has the Milwaukee 8 107. And uh, again, this is completely the same as the civilian model goes as far as the motor and transmission go. And if you've wondered about the civilian version of the Electroglide, it is a great bike. Harley introduced it for civilians again in 2019 as far as a version of the Electroglide. It's basically a stripped down street glide and uh, make sure you check out the Law Abiding Biker podcast. We put a new episode out about every 10 days. We did do an episode on that Electroglide and a lot of information and uh, yeah, check it out. See if it is the bike for you. All right, and real quick, before you leave this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon. Every time those are hit, another biker joins the revolution. We would love to have you be part of it. And of course, one of the first things you'll notice on the police bike, the obvious, yeah, red and blue lights. Now, um, you'll also see that on this bike, we do the black and white theme. That's just what our agency decides to do. But I've uh, been to conferences and competitions, and there are some really uh, cool designs that different agencies use but uh, on the front of ours this is some of the stock stuff that makes it a police bike this comes out of the factory these have the Harley logo on them uh, these actual red and blue lights up front and uh, we'll move around the side here a little bit and you'll see on this side the right side uh, we've got a red um, kind of 360 so no matter how we have the bike parked uh, people can see us and moving around to the left side of the bike of course uh, blue light on this side, red light on the right, blue on the left here. Ooh, so mesmerizing, isn't it? If we uh, move up here just a little bit, you'll see, of course, we have this uh, light bar that runs across the windshield here, and uh, red and blue, and all these lights have a lot of different functions that uh, the dealership, when you're setting up the bike, different patterns and stuff, um, depending on, uh, you know, how you want it, basically. While we're on lights, let's move around and show you the rest of the lights on the bike here. And of course, here on the trunk on the right side, we have the blue lights there. And moving around to the back, we've got red on the bottom of the saddlebag there and blue on the right side. On the left side is the red light on the saddlebag. And I forgot, but you're sharp, you probably saw it. This one up here, red and blue. If you're wondering what this one is here, that's actually our brake light, it's all red and it actually pulsates when we hit the brakes a few times uh, uh, to get the attention of those uh, cars behind us. And of course, you can't have emergency lights without a blaring loud siren. And it's pretty loud. No, we're not gonna run it right now. All right, enough with the lights. Let's dive into the dash and show you what that's all about. So of course, on the electric glides, they are stripped down so they don't come with a boombox system or a stereo or anything like that. Makes them cheaper, but uh, of course we don't need that. And uh, instead we put our uh, Motorola uh, police radio. They use that uh, little glove box there. Still comes with a juke box compartment. I kind of just use it as a glove box for things because again, it's not attached to, that USB is not attached to uh, a stereo system. And we move up, of course, running across the windshield is that light bar uh, that you saw from the front. That kind of takes up the dash. And interesting thing is, you all know there's a vent up here, 
and the front of the bike to uh, cut down on head buffeting. And uh, what they did is they just put a vent up top and you can uh, unscrew these and slide it to turn that vent on or off. So it kind of goes up through this light piece and then out there. I don't honestly know that it does anything at all, but nonetheless, it's there. All right, you guys might see those couple switches down in there. That speaker uh, and headlight, you can turn the speaker on or off or the headlight. Basically that speaker just turns on uh, the left side here, there's a radio speaker behind her so we can, we have a headset, a Bluetooth headset, but um, if it's the battery's dead or whatever, or we do need to hear it uh, uh, not in our headset, we can just flick that speaker. Uh, and the reason that headlight switches there is because when we're doing escorts, uh, long story, but if you're a tail rider, you don't have, you gotta turn your headlight off. So uh, that would be the time that we use that. All right, and moving over here, uh, you won't have these, of course, on a civilian model. Um, these buttons over here, red is for a PA system. Of course, we have a mic in our helmet, so we can talk over the, the siren speaker, PA, and uh, then the other one is we push down here, and that one is to activate the radio so we can talk to dispatch. And then over here, this is actually our siren, and uh, you can hit that button, and it gives you different siren modes, of course, Yelp and Wail and all that kind of stuff. And other than that, this is completely the same as the civilian version. All right, moving over to the right side control clusters here. Um, looks probably very much the same for you. Uh, we do have a button down here, a red button, and that's for our emergency lights. You can just hit front or just rear lights or of course activate them all. And of course, those that have been following have no fear. Yes, I definitely have my biker gripper cell phone motorcycle mount on my police bike, along with my civilian bikes, of course. And uh, yeah, you wanna support the channel, you wanna get hooked up with one, I'll link to it in the description below. I actually donated these uh, bad boys uh, to our unit so all the guys could have them. And I have had other motor units uh, throughout the world reaching out to me and getting their police fleet hooked up with those things black or chrome um, and I'll tell you we, we have bikes go down in training we have some higher speed uh, things that happen where bikes go down and uh, these phones will not budge 18 pounds grip strength um, uh, and I'm telling you no proprietary case that you have to use none of that no straps it simply is just a ton of strength grip strength and the phone comes in and out super quick time is money you guys know that um, and it will fit your biggest phones, absolutely your Galaxy Notes and all those biggest phones that you can think of. It actually expands very wide and like I say, in and out. Uh, again, I'll just throw a link in the description below if you are interested in that bad boy. Oh, and this is the perch mount version. Um, we also have a universal bar mount uh, version that will go around uh, any round bar, again, black or chrome. All right, let's move back a little bit and let's talk about the old police tractor seat. I get a lot of questions on why we run these um, and this does come stock with the police versions. And so what this seat does, uh, unlike a, a, a civilian seat, is it really centers you over the bike and puts you in the proper riding position for the kind of riding that we do, which is very aggressive riding. If you've ever been to a police competition or seen our you know, low speed course drills and cone work, and even high speed, we do the high speed courses. Again, uh, this seat just puts you in that proper riding position. So I really like it. I wouldn't want a tour on it, that's for sure. Um, there's definitely better seats for touring, but again, for the kind of work we do, that is why uh, we like the tractor seats. And you ask, can I maneuver my personal bikes the same as this police bike? Well, absolutely. But it can be a bit more work because you're not naturally in the position. You have to scoot up, choke up, depending on your height and all that kind of stuff. Um, this definitely makes that a less effort, I should say. All right, real quick, I'm gonna to talk to you about this only because we get asked a lot. And that is, what do we use to clean our police motorcycles? How do we keep them looking so good, so sharp, all that kind of stuff? Um, everything I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna to link to in the description below. If you appreciate uh, what we do on this channel, you wanna support us, you can purchase it all through our store. Uh, but I'll tell you what we, we are using, and that is for those wet washes. Um, now and then when you really need to get the grime off and you rode in rain or it's really dirty, of course you just got a wet wash, Bike Bright, love it. That's why we brought it to our store. It'll last you a long time, it foams up. Stuff just melts off, amazing stuff. Um, the rest of the time for our waterless motorcycle solution, this is our number one go-to, and that is our beloved Bug Slide. Of course, it comes with the trigger bottles and the microfiber cloths and all that kind of stuff. 
This stuff's awesome. It puts a microscopic uh, protective coat in between your paint, of course, so the next time you clean it and uh, it's easier to get those bugs and all that grime off, um, just shines up chrome, paint, windshields, use it on our helmets, our face shields, it's just our boots, even our motors boots, uh, leather boots to get bugs off now and then. So the stuff is so versatile and so uh, uh, safe to use on everything. So that's what you'll see us doing before those events, before parades, we're out bug sliding our motorcycles. All right, moving back a little bit, uh, right side saddlebag. Let's take a peek in here. Got a little surprise. And of course, the uh, AR-15 you see in there, magazine and all that kind of stuff. Of course, it is appropriately locked in there. I have a way I can get it out real quick, but uh, it is secured. Um, and I'm not gonna mention the company, but uh, it's a shorty AR-15, um, obviously, so that it can actually fit uh, within the saddlebag there. If you are a motors unit, uh, out there watching and you're interested in getting hooked up uh, with this uh, kind of setup just uh, hit me up and uh, I'll tell you kind of what we used and how we did it. All right since we're on saddlebags we'll move to the left side here. Not quite as exciting in here. Uh, sunglasses, uh, hat, got a hat, snacks, of course the old trusty laser, first aid kit, not that exciting. Maybe the uh, trunk here will be a little bit more exciting for you. Let's take a look. All right, so yes, as you're starting to become aware, there's very little storage room because uh, we got a rifle takes up most of the bag. And then uh, I really have the left side for miscellaneous stuff. But this trunk, you can't fit anything in this trunk because we have our old trusty laptop here of course everything's electronic these days so all the tickets we write um, we write right here on the computer um, and this is actually this computer I can take it with me it's uh, docked in here so I can lift it up it's got a handle on it and uh, take it right off that dock there all right and so we'll move around here and uh, this actually just some clips for paperwork and stuff but this is actually a uh, thermal printer and it's got paper down in there and uh, we print the ticket out right there or the collision report or whatever we happen to be working on. Just some extra paper up there. If we run around down in here, there's actually, I don't know how well you can see it, but right down in there is an actual modem because obviously uh, we are on GPS, so dispatch and uh, everybody else can see where we're at at any given time. Uh, but it is all that we can fit in here. That is it. This does rock up just a little bit. So you can rock it up depending on the angle uh, that you want your computer. Push that back down. And then over here, stuff down in here is our actual scanner. That's how we can scan registrations and license. Of course, pops them right in the computer, inserts them in the collision report or ticket or whatever we may be doing. But that is a work of art because that is uh, uh, all we could possibly fit uh, in this trunk. And yes, I know amazingly enough, it does fit and one more thing i guess i breezed over right here um, is the act there's an actual battery another battery right up here a lithium ion battery and that's to uh, uh, supplement the actual bike's battery which is under the seat where you would expect that's for the motor the battery under the seat and all that that runs all the motor that stuff and then of course this all this stuff and uh, uh, lights and emergency lights and all that take a lot of extra power so that is what that battery is for in there. Ooh, check those out. Ooh, 7-Eleven Slurpee certificates for the kids. Love handing those things out. Oh, another little surprise in here. Uh, badge stickers to hand out to the kids. And that's one of the best parts about where I work being a police motorcycle officer is being able to interact with the community. I really like serving this community in this capacity. Uh, we get to do a lot of extra things and events and we do talks and we go to schools and uh, of course uh, you know we do do some funerals and escorts and parades and all that kind of stuff so uh, definitely definitely one of my favorite parts about it. The second best part yeah I get to ride a Harley Davidson every day. Very blessed. All right and something else you might have noticed on the outside of this trunk right there that is shore power basically just plug in a standard plug that is to tender the battery in the trunk. There's a separate tender like you guys are used to for the battery for the main motorcycle underneath that seat. Uh, so we can tender both batteries if we're down for any amount of time. And if you're wondering, yes, the electrical system on the bike also charges the trunk battery. All right, and on police electroglides, 
you'll see this big box uh, in front of the left saddlebag here uh, attached to the crash bars. Uh, that's basically the hub for the emergency equipment that they put on these bikes. All right, guys, real quick, and we'll get right back into your video. A lot of man hours, effort, and of course, finances go into keeping this YouTube channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member, link in the description below. Basically, you pledge a certain amount per piece of content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers, access to the private Facebook group, it's a troll-free zone, access to our live video broadcast and chat, access to our premium videos up on request, and access to those ride and meet up events. All right, let's get back into your video. Um, question, are these bikes souped up at all? Um, and the answer for our agency is no. So that means no stage one air intake, no headers, no pipes, no EFI tuner. I have been uh, to conferences and seen some agencies do do that. It's not because we haven't asked, trust me, uh, just hasn't been approved. So for our agency, the bikes are completely stock. All right, so, um, of course, comes standard on your touring models up front, or the, the uh, engine guards, protective guards. We also, of course, have the saddlebag protective bars uh, all the way around. I have those on my civilian bike too. Reason is, as a police motorcycle instructor, uh, trust me, these bikes, especially when guys are first learning, they get dropped a lot. And uh, as long as you have the protective bars, Harveys can handle it. You can drop them over and over. No big deal, no damage. You just pick them back up and ride on. All right, pretty standard when it comes to the dash panel over the tank and all that kind of stuff. Of course, gas filler there. Ooh, look what I have. This is the uh, Rick Rack Gas Cap Keeper Magnet. Awesome, I put that on. I'll link to it in the description below because you can simply stick it there, stick it on any metal surface. I can gas up, it doesn't get dirty. Main thing is I don't forget that bad boy because they do get forgotten all the time. Done, pick it right back up. All right, and off this plate, off the back of the trunk, is of course our radio antenna for getting a hold of dispatch, that kind of radio. And this big piece here is our GPS tracker. So you saw a lot of stuff in the saddlebag, the trunk, the computer, the modem, the printer, the rifle. That's up to each agency. It doesn't come factory like that from Harley. Uh, so you gotta customize that, uh, you know, for your needs. Really what makes this a police electroglide is it comes factory with the lights and siren. All right, guys, I'm gonna pop a couple of videos on the screen for you here. Hopefully they're useful. Check them out before you leave. That's right, train hard, ride safe, keep your head on a swivel. I'm out of here till the next one. Peace. I